Okay. <clears throat> I actually understand what a lot of this means. So, um... Stop there. This is a crack. A, um... Gold and Silver with Mike Maloney. I'm not doing this to steal or take your video. I could do that without pointing my fucking camera phone at the TV screen. I'm doing this to provide context to some of the things you're saying and pointing to. Because there's a lot of... Well, I'm going to be honest. 20 years ago... A quarter of America, 25%, one in four Americans were retarded, congenially retarded. Nowadays, it's more along the lines of 75 to 95% at an average. And yeah, averages can be bracketed like that. It's convoluted, but just trust me, it fucking works. So a lot of that people don't understand what the fuck you're talking about, Mike. They they don't they don't fucking know. So I'm gonna do some context here. Just periodically while I'm uh holding my fucking camera phone at the video, I'll turn it around, set it down, and explain what the fuck's going on. That's to say nothing about uh what YouTube's gonna fucking do and say, oh, it needs to be copyright claimed or striked or whatever. Hey, YouTube. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, okay? I'm providing extra context and uh, simplification and basically a um, an intellectual level of translation to bring it down to your stupid level, okay? Yeah, fuck all of you, you fucking idiots. Hi, everyone. Earlier today, I was making a video predicting that the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates, and it was based on some data, and I knew they had to do it. I said it would uh, go down to either half a percent or zero, and it would be sometime this week. And then, uh, w just after getting the video edited, while it was uploading, they announced that they were cutting rates. So, the Federal Reserve cuts rates to zero and launches massive $700 billion quantitative easing program. Now, uh... Right, quantitative easing, oversimplified, and yes, it. I'm going to oversimplify it. Basically, it is inflation. And inflation is where they just dump money into the system. Because money doesn't mean a goddamn fucking thing, other than uh, it, it's just a piece of paper that it's an IOU. It, it, that's that's all it is. And he actually says it's an IOU. He'll he'll say that, and it'll confirm what the fuck I've just said. It's inflation because they're dumping IOUs, kind of like um, hey hey Bitcoiners. It's kind of like the pump and dump system. That's exactly what the fucking Fed is doing right now. You understand, everybody? They're dumping Monopoly money onto the board for us to pick up. Okay? Yeah, is, is that enough fucking analogies and shit for everyone to understand, you fucking idiots? Moving along. Uh, down further in this article here, there's a paragraph that I want you to look at. The Fed also cut reserve requirements of thousands of banks to zero. So they don't need any reserves anymore. A bank's reserve is physical, touchable cash paper monies. Monopoly money. Fake money that don't mean any goddamn thing. That they have to have in the vault to put into circulation to give to you, you fucking idiots. You can go and give it to someone and say, oh yeah, it's worth me giving you this piece of paper for that, that grocery there, or that car there, or that tool there. That That's what, uh, that's what a reserve is. It's, it's having something to fall back on. 
to go to in an emergency. And the feds are requiring banks to have a zero reserve. You don't prep your fucking emergency ship unless there's a fucking emergency. Okay? Just keep that in mind. That's the context that this uh, sets up. Fucking banks required to have zero fucking reserve. Even with a fiat currency that don't mean shit. Fiat currency means it has no value, no real value. That's what intrinsic value is to the fucking fiat currency. Yeah, I could look up the fucking word fiat. But it's just another big fancy fucking word that means a goddamn paragraph worth of other words. That some asshole in a courtroom made up so that they could have a fucking job, so fuck it. Fiat currency means shit. It's shit currency. Because that's what it's worth. It's worth wiping your ass because it's shit. But anyway, a reserve is a good thing, even with a fucking fake shit currency. The Fed's re not requiring them to have anything in reserve? Wow. And um, some terms that he's going to throw out are interchangeable. Uh, he's going to say a nearly everything bubble. Okay, in the stock market, and I have some stocks, so I, know, I, I did some research. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. A bubble is where everything peaks. It goes up to a peak, and then it suddenly comes back down on that same curve that it went up. So if it goes up at a 90 degree angle, it's going to come back down after a few moments at that 90 degree angle. Which is almost impossible because process over time. It's, it's a parabolic curve. It's a, an exponential log chart curve. Log, logarithmic, log, and exponential when you're talking about a graph, like I am right now, where it goes up, that's an exponential curve. That's all the same thing. It means it doubles every so often. So it goes from this, to this, to this. Instead of... It just goes... It just jumps. Anyway, back to the main point here. No reserve equals bad. So that, that means this peak that they're at is about to go down. Okay, bull market. Bear market. Bull market. Bear market. Up at the top, bubble. These terms are interchangeable. Peak of it, bubble. <laughs> bull market. It's it's going like a bull in China shop. It's skyrocketing. It's going it's going up. It's either going up on the slant or going up on the uh, the exponential growth. Bull market. It's rushing like a bull. You run from the bulls. <laughs> it's, it's that's the analogy. Bull market. It's bull. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's out of context. Bull market. It's bull. Bear market is it's coming down from the peak. Because it's like a bare shelf. It's worth less. It's all gone. The value's plummeting. Because it's not there. Bear market. Bear shelves. Bull market. It's taken off. Bear market. Bear shelves. That's the analogy you go, go to. Okay? Got it? We need to move on. I've lingered here on these two points long enough. Uh, in addition, in a global coordinated move by central banks, the Fed said bank, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank, and the Fed, the Federal Reserve, and the Swiss National Bank took action. So they're all coordinating these things together. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So the, what they're doing, an action to enhance dollar liquidity around the world through existing dollar swap arrangements. Liquidity. It's an analogy. Water. It flows. They're increasing the amount moving around out there. 
en enhanced dollar liquid li liquidity. Fucking words. Enhance dollar liquidity. Those three words mean they're wanting it to move around more easily. That's what it means. So they want this fake currency that doesn't mean shit to move around easily. On a global scale, put it because it says around the world, through existing dollar swap arrangements. Through existing, that's like, we want the water to flow more freely through the, the aqueducts of the Roman Empire. That's the analogy I'm going to give you. If you don't like it, you know, make up your own. But understand, they want it to flow more easily, basically. Through the poor setup that they've already got. The one that they're having to increase inflation in already... To make it look like it's good? Question mark? That's the question I'm asking? To make it look like it's good? Anyway, moving right along. The rate cuts, what's happening right now, we're coming to the end of a debt super cycle. The coronavirus was the pin that popped the, the almost everything bubble. All of these bubbles are deflating. They're panicked and they're losing. Okay context for what he said about coronavirus being the pin that popped the almost everything bubble oh, this is going to be fun to explain um you know what the fucking coronavirus is it's going around right now if you don't know what it is look at the fuck up <coughs> get a bunch of different perspectives on it so you know what the fuck you're watching instead of taking it from one piece of uh, source and saying, oh, this is all there is to it. No, that's stupid. Because there's a lot of fuckwits out there who lie, like the WHO and the CDC. They're just not giving accurate information. Not, not at all. Especially when there's videos coming out of vloggers from China who are being censored immediately for showing what's really happening. And that was last month that that was going on probably still is anyway that 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 whole thing look that up learn what the fuck it is learn what the fuck it's doing i'm gonna go off on a side note and say it's not the fucking flu the flu there's already a treatment for there's chemical treatments for it there's inoculations there's vaccines for the flu already if this new coronavirus were the flu no one would be saying anything about it because there's already vaccines. It's not the flu. Dipshits. Fucking retards. Moving along. When, when things go up, they gotta come down. Universal observation of gravity. And I'm not calling these laws of physics real laws anymore because they're observations that are accepted as axioms axiom is something that is universally accepted by the vast majority as a truth or being established okay it's established that you observe gravity being a thing but it's not a fucking law of physics what goes up must come down Okay, well, what about all those balloons that um, went the fuck up? And if they don't pop, they'll just go out of the atmosphere into space. Think about that shit. Or they'll hit the upper atmospheric limit where the helium inside of them no longer carries them up. And they'll just stay there if they don't pop. If they don't leak helium out. There's a lot of other observations of physics in play there. Gravity. We'll put that aside. Anyway. Axiom. Yeah, there you go. Moving right along. The market. It went up. It, it had its peak. It looked like this. It looked like a parabolic curve going straight up into a line. That's a logarithmic chart. That's exponential. That's doubling every so often. And on that chart, 
it's observed. What goes up, it's got to come down. So eventually, it's going to hit its peak. That's going to be the bubble that's going to pop, and it's going to go into a bear market. It's going to go back down. It's going to go from bull to bear, okay? It's that fucking simple. It's, it's a well-observed event. It is nothing new. It is nothing to get your fucking panties in the wad over, okay? It's nothing to freak the fuck out about. Just like every 100 years, 18, 20, 19, 20, 20, 20, America, you've been around since before 1820, right? You saw those other viruses. You've got the documents. Collectively, it's, it's called history, right? I mean, did you take those fucking pandemics that went around out of the history books and just decide not to do anything with it? I mean, this was, this was an, an actual occurrence, an axiom, that every 100 years... A virus was going to come out. It was going to happen without fail. That's the axiom here. America did not act on it. The rest of the planet did not fucking act on it. Did not have things in place to be ready for this. And that's why it's popping the bubble. And making it go into a bear market. Making it come down from the mountain. What goes up that mountain has to come down that mountain. That's that's how the the, the system is, is working. It's a very poor and inefficient and crude and rudimentary system based on greed, but that's how it's working. It's based on greed and fear. It needs to be this nice, even thing because economy is a joke. It, it, it really is. That aside, moving right the fuck along. It's in control. This, like I said, it's the end of a debt super cycle. They're going to try and blame everything on the coronavirus, uh, but it was actually Hold destined up. to happen. Yeah, yeah, it was destined to happen. The, the world or Satan himself makes a new virus every 100 years and it fucks humanity over. Yes. That's an axiom that's well established. Way to do a synonym, Mike. Way for me and you to do a fucking synonym. They're going to blame everything on the virus. Well, China shut down its production facilities. And you don't shut down your entire fucking system, your entire way of life, and put all of your citizens into quarantine if nothing is wrong, if it's just the flu. People did not prepare for this. They knew it was going to happen for over a hundred years. It's an axiom, well established. It was going to happen every 100 years. Just repeating stuff I've already said. Moving along. Anyway, because of the way that our modern banking system works and the leverage that they had built into this system, and the complexity of the system creates, makes it more and more and more fragile. And now the system is beginning to break. Banks. Well, he, he's talking about the complexity of the economic structure, the system in place that is designed to keep everyone as a slave with extra steps involved. That's the easiest way I can I can explain it by quoting Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. That's just well technically it was Morty and the, the Zorbs what yeah, Zorb. <laughs> I don't remember his last name in the show. But that's just slavery with extra steps involved. You think money has value, so you work for money. Oh, they, they won't be my slaves. They'll work for each other. They'll pay each other money. That's just slavery with extra steps involved. Because the assholes who are in charge, sitting on top of everything, are just ruining the show. That's the simplest definition I can give that. 
uh, <clears throat> lowered rates and sw uh, did swap plans. The quantitative easing will take from five take 500 billion of treasuries and 200 billion of uh, agency backed mortgage securities. So mor mortgage securities, quantitative easing, inflation will take the form of. $500 billion of fake monopoly shit money uh, of treasuries and $200 billion of agency-backed mortgage securities. Okay, those four words, agency-backed mortgage securities. I had to dig deep for that one. In its most basic form, an agency-backed mortgage security, big fucking confusopoly of words to confuse you, agency. The agency is a corporate fiction, like America. The United States of America is an agency. It is a corporate fiction. All of these three things I've said... Uh, United States of America, agency, corporate fiction, those are interchangeable. Those mean the exact same damn thing. It's a fake, non-existent thing that says it exists because it's an axiom. It's an axiom because you're too stupid to realize the truth. Because you're retarded. And that's why I'm explaining everything he's saying in simple terms for all of you fucking mongoloidal idiots. Backed mortgage securities. Well, you know what backed is. It's supported by. So it's supported by this fake agency that doesn't exist. It's supported by America. And America is the, uh, the fake entity. That's another word that can be interchanged. United States of America. Entity. Agency. What was the fourth one I said? It's a confusopoly. It's designed to confuse and disorient you. And that's why all four of those terms mean the exact same fucking thing. So this fake non-existent agency is supporting the mortgage securities. What's a mortgage? It's a convoluted system where you tell the bank, I don't have the money to pay for this, but let me, um, let me pay you and you tell the company selling this house to me that uh, they have money? That's a mortgage. So, what's the, the mortgage that they're talking about? Because it is similar because of its function. The function of a mortgage is part A, or, you know, agent... Or straw man, and those are two different terms. Agent or straw man A goes to agency or straw man B and says, Hey, I need, um, I don't have money for this thing, but, um, I work a job. I'll pay you a little something every so often. And you tell, um, you tell agency or fiction no wait you tell you tell agency or um straw man c over there that uh they got money and pending approval from credit check okay we can do that yo agency c agency a over there he's got a mortgage with us it's, a, it's an agreement that um, he's going to pay us and we're, we're going to we're going to create some uh, agreement between you and me that he's going to pay me to me to pay you that <sighs> wait is that a loan or a mortgage you know what fuck it that's something I might have to look up because it is a fucking confusopoly. But it works similar to that. May have extra steps involved. And a security. A fucking security. One of the things that a security is, 
is is a um, it's a fucking debt instrument. It's like saying this person is born. They have a social security number. That's a security. So they're trading your life on paper. That your your rights, your privileges as a living being are tied to these social security numbers and that is one form of a mortgage security is that social security number. So the United States supports your social security number and that's what they're using for the quantitative easing. They're taking money out of your Federal Reserve account. That is to say they're taking credit from you. They're demeaning your life's meaning. They're taking away how much you mean to their stupid fake system. That's exactly what the fuck is going on with an agency-backed mortgage security. Because you put all of those words in context. The United States is supporting your social security number. That's what an agency-backed mortgage security is. And yeah, I had to look at the uh, screen just to read. Because it's a confusopoly designed to disorient and confuse you. So, yeah, Agent A is saying to Agent B, Hell yeah, um, I'll sign away my my life as a slave to you, and you tell Agent C over there, they're going to get money, they're going to get paid for me to live in a house. Progress. Side note, progress. Pretty soon, nobody's going to own anything, including the shirt on their back in the name of progress. Okay, that's that's explaining agency-backed mortgage securities. That's a lot of fucking words. Just to explain those four simple words, which is a confusopoly of shit. The Fed said the purchases will begin Monday with a $40 billion installment. And just because they put that dollar symbol in front of the, the 40, it doesn't mean anything to me. Like Monopoly money. Mortgage backed securities. And it starts Monday. So the Fed cut rates. But look at this. It's $700 billion worth of asset purchases. They counterfeit currency into existence and they buy stuff. They buy stuff away from you and me. They okay, what he just said they counterfeit currency into existence. That's their quantitative easing that's how the federal reserve works they counterfeit the money in to existence and say it has meaning they print it out every fucking day trust me they fucking do asset purchases you're a fucking asset to them you work a job you have a uh, a fucking social security number you have a fucking federal reserve account you're an asset trust me when they talk about assets in the Fed, they're talking about federal assets. That the federal government owns you. You are the asset. Trust me. I've looked this up. You can look it up too. You know how you can? You can start by looking up your Federal Reserve account. It's those blue or black numbers on the back of at the bottom of your social security card. Trust me on this one. And I'm not going to show you mine, but I am going to take another look at it. Okay, your standard social security number appears on the front of the card in black, above your name, which is in all capital black print. Color and Capital and type of print and cursive means everything in the Fed. Trust me. Black, red, and blue are the three colors that you need to know the meaning of. Block print. Signature and cursive. All capital. First letter of the beginning of each word capital. 
capitalist minimus, decapitalist minimus. These are, these two are opposition to each other, contrasting energies in the system that they've got working. One, the capitalist minimus, <laughs> the all capital letters. I may have the terms uh, backwards, but, you know, confusopoly. They made it confusing. The first one means that you are a corporate fiction, a fake entity that is an asset. First letter capital, the rest of it lowercase, that means that you are a flesh and blood living being. Look at the fuck up. On the back of my social security card, there is a letter followed by numbers. It is in red. That's important. That number is tied to my personal Federal Reserve account as a corporate fiction because I am in the capitalist minimus and I do not have the money required to put myself into the decapitalist minimus because their system requires that you suffer a great deal of hardship in order to exist. Now that number that's tied to the Federal Reserve account, and there's there's two or three per an area that you can go to. There's there's a lot of them actually. There's a couple of main ones, there's a couple of subsection ones, but that's all off topic. But it's supporting evidence to Asset purchase. You are the asset, American idiot. And yeah, that is a Green Day quote. Fuck you. Entitling treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. There it is again. It's entitling. Mm, no, wait. Entailing. Wrong fucking word, me. Entailing treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Mortgage-backed securities. That's your corporate fiction. That's your existence. They're buying and trading you on the stock market. On a privatized stock market. It's called the American Privatized Prison System. The school-to-prison pipeline? That's the sporting evidence for that one. This entire thing he's talking about is supporting evidence for the school to prison pipeline. It exists. Moving right the fuck along. They create all this currency. Now quantitative easing, I'm going to explain this in an upcoming video because nobody seems to know how quantitative easing actually works. And so I'm going to show you that it's completely different than permanent open market operations or temporary open market operations, which is the repurchase agreements. So, uh, while I was, I was... Okay, these open market agreements, that is a new financial term for me. I don't know what the fuck that is, so I'm not going to touch that topic. I had made this chart here earlier today, and when I saw it, it was very alarming. You know, I track the dynamic yield curve. I know what alarmed him. That, you can click on... That's what alarmed him. That fucking drop-off. No, I interrupted what he was saying. I gotta go back. Or temporary open market operations, which is the repurchase agreements. So, uh, while I was, I was... I had made this chart here earlier today... And when I saw it, it was very alarming. You know, I track the dynamic yield curve, and just below that, you can click on the different charts that make it up. And you can follow what the interest rates are for all the different uh, maturities of uh, bills, notes, and bonds, the treasury bonds. Uh, and what I saw here was, you know, when they lowered the... Um, interest rate to 1%, it was a day after these bonds had crashed to 1%. So it was the free market sort of setting the rate, and then the Fed followed. And so I was predicting in my last video that this would uh, uh, be lowered down to like a quarter of a percent or zero is what I said. And before we could get it 
done edited while it was uploading. They made that announcement. Uh, then I showed this graph of how the Fed is reactionary, not anticipatory. They're not controlling the market. Okay. He's got a red and a blue line. Effective federal fund rate and three-month treasury con constant maturity rate. Treasury maturity. Constant means it continues. So treasury... That has to do with uh, oh, the fucking treasury. The treasury is where all the money is kept. Uh, the money. The money. The money. The money. The money. Your existence. The money. The treasury. That's where it all is. In theory. But in reality, it really isn't. Uh, maturity means it grows up. They're just referencing the biological function of becoming mature. They're they're saying it's growing or increasing. This graph that he's made, it's tying to the points that he understands, probably. I'm going to bet 80% that he understands what he's talking about, but I don't understand those two points that he's talking about. So, moving right the fuck along. They're reacting to it. They are right now losing control. You know, the, the rates go up, and the Fed then increased rates back in 2018, and then uh, they started lowering rates in late 2019, because the bonds were falling faster than the Fed funds rate. So I saw that this, the free market was actually in charge and the Fed was losing control. So with these asset purchases, they're going. Okay. You aren't the only asset on their privatized stock. They can also use that exact same way of wording of asset to talk about the publicly tradable stock, okay? The publicly accessible stock, the one that you or me can get on and trade if we go to a, uh, um, a broker or a broker's website. We get on and we click buttons and type in things and, and we look at charts and graphs and numbers in letters and words. It sounds like I'm oversimplifying it, but trust me. The stock I have in, in Microsoft is summarized as MSFT. Words. Shortened to letters. Okay, trust me. When I say we can go and look at words and letters and numbers and things, it's literally like that. It seems confusing to a lot of people, but I understand a bunch of it. It's really simple. Words get abbreviated with just letters. It's, it's not a, an anagram or anything. It's just they shorten it, okay? It's shorthand. That's all it is, just without the vowels. No, they don't use all the consonants. So the two markets are interchangeable. The Fed's private one where you and I are bought and sold as slaves, and the public one that they want to hand to you and say, hey, hey, public market, free market, yeah, this this has value, yeah, buy stock, yeah, give, us, give these company monies so you can say you own a billionth of a percent of their company, hey, yeah, I don't have anything behind my back, no, 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 there's nothing behind my back, you know, the, mar the other market never existed. You know, look at this. Look at the public market. Look at the bubble. Look at the bubble. It's shiny. It's going to pop. That That's what they're doing. Verbatim. Okay? Oversimplified. But he's talking about the Federal Reserve uh, in the the public market. I went off on a tangent explaining how the privatized federal market works but they do work exactly the same it's just in the privatized sector in the school to prison pipeline sector 
it is literally your life they're trading in the public sector it's a theoretical statement that says you own a thing and I've done a video where I showed and I heavily censored the the paperwork that I got sent my own fucking stock in Microsoft I've got some in Microsoft I've got some in fucking um, uh, waste management WM they're both blue chip stock well Unless unless this bubble pop has something to say about it, unless the bear market tanks, unless it becomes the fucking Hindenburg, then it won't be worth shit. And um, I probably won't get my money back that I put into it because it's a fiat currency that doesn't mean shit. But moving along. Here are the assets. This is securities held outright, U.S. Treasury securities. So this is all of the different... Uh, bills, notes, and bonds that the uh, U.S. that the Federal Reserve holds, and you can see this is the crisis of 08, and then QE1, QE2, and QE3, and it took us up to a level. And they were trying to normalize their balance sheet. Okay, when he said QE, he was saying quantitative easing. He was just shortening it for, for time. To keep his video as short and sweet as possible so that you could move the fuck on with whatever you're doing. I, however, am explaining things in more detail. Providing more context for all you simple-minded fucks. Moving right along off of that tangent I just went into. Quantitative easing is where they pump and dump. And you know how I can tell it's a pump and dump? Look at this. It bottoms out. Okay, pump it up. Pump it up. Pump, 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 pump it up. Then dump. You know, um, look over here. Okay, yeah. Um, let's just go to 2 million. And ride that line across. Oh, wait, it's higher than 2 million. Way higher. Um, it's at 2.4 million. Mmm, yeah, they pumped it to 2.4 something million. Yeah, I'm not going to bother trying to measure pixels on my screen and get an accurate measurement of where it's at. They pumped to 2.4 million. And now, they got a dump. Bitcoiners, uh, cryptocurrency guys, Dogecoiners... Illyrium, uh, Spark? You know, fuck it. Cryptocurrency holders, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Pump and dump. BitConnect. This is the same fucking thing all over again. Trust me. It goes up, it comes down. The only difference between when the Federals do it and when you do it is the Federals say you're doing it illegally. That's the only difference. And yes, I am being snarky and sarcastic when I'm saying this. Even though it's the truth. They pump and dump, just like BitConnect and fucking uh, cryptocurrencies did. And, and you notice, the Fed actually took control of Bitcoin. Its pump and dump system got implemented. Because when did cryptocurrencies become a thing? Wasn't it somewhere right around 2008, 2010? To the best of my memory, it was right about those times. Somebody fact check me on that one. Axiom check me on that one. Make sure I'm saying something that's as close to true as possible. Because if it weren't 2008 to 2010... When they took control of the cryptocurrency and pumped, and they're starting to dump. You know, it looks awfully fucking similar to me. Yeah. It does, doesn't it, crypto miners? Doesn't it? Moving right the fuck along. And they couldn't. And by August of last year, it bottomed at just over $2 trillion dollars worth of uh, treasuries that they had purchased. Now, here's the evil thing about this. 
They counterfeit currency into existence, and they buy a U.S. Treasury. Counterfeiting the currency into existence is exactly what the feds do. And when you counterfeit a currency into existence, they say that's illegal. They pump it up, and then they dump it on you. Pump and dump. 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 Moving right the fuck along. A U.S. Treasury is an IOU from the Treasury, and they're going to pay back that IOU by taxing all of us in the future. So the principal and interest that is paid... They pump up that IOU, and then they dump it on you. So they say, this, this has value. You're going to pay it back. That's exactly what the fuck he just said. You know, that sounds oddly like a thing that they accused the Mafia of doing. You know? Awfully fucking familiar, isn't it? They accused the Mafia of <gasps> racketeering and <gasps> profiteering. Oh no, say it ain't so. Racketeering and profiteering and currencies, oh my! Mike... This is exactly the same. It's synonymous. Synonymous, you break that in word down. You conjugate it. It means synonym. And it's root word. Synonym. Two words that have the same meaning, but they're different. Kind of like... If you look at a language, the word blanco and the color that it is, white... White, Blanco. Blanco is Spanish or Hispanic. I'm not sure which dialect and region, so don't fact check me on the specifics of that, but Blanco is a Hispanic word that means white. It is a synonym for the American word that means white. The color, white. Not the corporate fiction of white. And that is a corporate fiction. White, black, or other on their paperwork is a corporate fiction. Trust me. So what he said is synonymous with what I said earlier. On these bonds that uh, the Federal Reserve is buying with currency that they just create, they type it up and they credit an account. Uh, uh, that uh, bond has to be paid by you and I and your children in the future. In, in the future, yeah. That's, that's what they call taxes. And, you know, telling someone to pay you money just because you exist sounds an awful lot like the racketeering that the Mafia was alleged to have been doing in the 1930s. Swingers, speakeasies, back then, oh my. Hey, you pay me money for uh, insurance or uh, bad things are going to happen to you from me. May or may not be from me, but bad things will happen. You, you pay me money and those bad things won't happen. Those theoretical things I'm talking about, they won't happen. Government's take on this. <laughs> hey, you pay us money because you exist or we'll throw you in prison and let someone else beat you up. It's synonymous. It's the exact same thing. In this case, synonymous means literally the exact same thing, but to quote Morty and Zeke, it has extra steps involved. Moving right the fuck along. You know, some of these bonds are 30-year bonds. And so you're talking about your children having to work and pay taxes uh, to pay off these bonds. So they Yeah, your children working to pay taxes on a pump and dump that was brought about during your time. That just sounds like slavery with extra steps involved. Doesn't it? And I'm yeah, I'm hammering this home because it's important for you to understand just how fucking retarded you really are, America already increased this from um, about $500 billion uh, since uh, August of last year. Okay, context for that one. 
<laughs> 500 billion. Okay, yeah, that's that's the short term he's measuring. Over the 300 years that America has been a thing, the deficit that he's talking about that you have to pay back because, you know, pay us money because you exist because that's racketeering that's profiteering that's taxes yeah i'm hammering that home so you understand that they're exactly the same thing they're just using a different word to describe them oh, wait the words are the synonyms but the meaning is the same fuck you america they don't care about you wait no oh, oh, george carlin is on back off It's the exact same fucking thing. Moving right along. They've been buying those through permanent open market, market operations. Now through QE, they're going to buy another $500 billion and they're going to do it at a, at a pace more rapid than... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The deficit. It's over... What was it? $20 trillion last time I looked at it? That was sometime around the when they were electing Trump into office. Twenty, twenty trillion. I know it's got a fucking two in it. Last time I looked, it's either two trillion or twenty trillion, but a trillion. That's a lot more than a million. It goes thousands. No, anyway, it goes ones, tens, and then and then the, it goes hundreds, thousands. It it, it goes then then you know. Realign the chart, thousands to, you know, t uh, ten thousand, a uh, hundred thousand. Realign the chart, and then it goes to million. Then it goes to ten millions, hundreds of millions, billions. Realign the chart, and then it goes to after the hundred millions, it goes to billions. Then it goes through that and, and realign, and it goes to trillions. That's a big fucking chart. So, it, you know, 2 trillion or 20 trillion. That's not the point. The point is that the, the fucking deficit, the debt that your children are going to have to pay is trillions of dollars. Trillions of dollars of enslavement money. Because it's a fiat currency that means nothing. So they say it means your life. Yeah, pay pay us money because it's insurance for your life. It's tax on your life. And if you want to know about taxes, yeah, fucking throw some money at me on Patreon or PayPal. Then I'll explain how they tax the living fuck out of you. And they tax you down to every last fucking one a quintillionth of a fucking penny ever before and this is along with the other uh 1.5 trillion which actually extrapolates out to about 4 trillion that they're doing so they're adding uh, 700 billion on top of the 4 trillion of the uh more of the repurchase agreements that uh pile up on top of each other when they're doing purchases of one month and three month repurchase uh, repurchase agreements which they announced uh earlier uh, okay a repurchase agreement means okay we're gonna we're gonna sell this to you and we're gonna repurchase it from you and take it back it's a it's a give then take it, it's just swapping it back and forth which incidentally is how criminals launder money they swap it around. The more times it gets swapped around, the cleaner it gets. That's the exact same thing this repurchase agreement is. Uh, then they also announced $200 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities. So they've been trying to unwind this, and now they can't. They're going to have to... The Federal Reserve is the largest owner of real estate in the world. Uh, they have purchased uh, 1.3 uh, trillion, and now they're, it's going to be over 1.5. This is almost 1.4 here trillion dollars of mortgage-backed securities. So they hold the mortgages on all of these homes, basically. But he's telling you how the feds own your fucking home. 
progress. Pretty soon, the only thing a man will own is the shirt on his back, all in the name of progress. Yeah, I have to say it that way to drive home the point. To make you realize just how stupid you really are, America. You mortgage your home to the government. To the bully. To the criminal. To the terrorist. To the tyranny that enslaves you. With money. You give them every fucking thing you have, including your home. When does it fucking stop? And now they're going to increase this to this will be uh, almost 1.6 trillion, and it's not going to stop there. This is a crisis. This is really the end game. And uh, what's going to happen is. Holy fuck, he said end game. Oh my god. <laughs> that tickled me in my guts, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That fucking tickled me. Because I know that he is referencing. <laughs> Both the chess terminology and the fucking Avengers movie. I know he's referencing both of them. I know he's saying, this is real bad and it has to stop. That's what he's really saying. This is very, very bad and it has to stop. It's so bad that it's laughable at how ludicrous it's grown to. The, por the proportion that it's been blown out of. It's fucking laughable because it's impossible to pay all those debts back. What the fuck were you thinking? How much fucking LSD did you inject directly into your fucking spinal cord? You fucking idiots. What the fuck were you smoking? How much fucking crack did you smoke how much fucking cocaine did you snort to come to the conclusion that we needed to inflate the fucking deficit that fucking much i'm speculating as to his line of thinking on it but what he said and the way i just explained it, it it's that's how fucking ludicrous it is ludicrous not the fucking rapper Fuck him. Ludicrous. Funny. Very, 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 very funny, very laughable. A joke. A very big, very funny joke. I'm oversimplifying the word ludicrous. Basically, it means extremely funny. But uh, his thesis statement for this video, zero proof the Federal Reserve has lost control. Yeah, Mike Maloney, you're right about that. Mikey boy, uh, take our dentate down to the sketty store, you know. Uh, remind them they owe us some cash and some cheddar. No, wait, wait. Make a provolone with uh, the marinara and meatballs. And don't forget the money. Moving right along. That was a joke. That was a joke. It was a joke about the spaghetti and the money. I have to provide context. There's this slow meltdown that is now being sped up by coronavirus. Because it's going to shut down our economy just like it shut down the uh, Chinese economy. and like it Okay, okay. Yeah, I need to provide more context on that one. It's not the flu. If it were the flu, they would not have shut China the fuck down. Okay? You understand? You fucking idiots. It's not the goddamn flu. The flu has a vaccine. The flu has treatment. The flu has... Oh, what's the other thing? It's a chemical version. The vaccine is just part of the virus that you adapt to. There's another one. I mentioned it earlier. I forgot. Just remember what I said from about an hour ago. If it weren't such a big deal, which it really is a big deal, they would not have shut China the fuck down. And all you idiots, China produces up to 90% of all the shit that you have in your home. All that plastic, uh, all the fucking toilet paper. Man, if you look, if you look real close, 
you'll see a little thing on it that says made in China. You know, hang on, hang on. Just hang on. This is going to put a few extra minutes on the thing here. Um, uh, hold on. I can, I can fucking swear that it's easy to spot. But the text is so damn small. It's been a while since I've looked at them. Where's the, where? Did they move it off the actual physical product itself? Yeah, on that one, it's not on the physical product itself. What the fuck was it? Hang on, just, just wait. This, everyone, is a toaster. A toaster. Okay. Walmart brand toaster. Made in China. See that? You know, the plastic and the metal that went into it. Yeah, refined in another country or refined at another uh, plant in China. Shipped into China and assembled in China and then shipped back to the U.S. Because the, the U.S. has no mining operation. U.S. Uh, drills for oil, ships it somewhere, charges a shipping and handling fee, charges a fee for them to have the fucking oil. It gets refined into gas and uh, plastics and other things. Then it gets shipped right back to the United States as fucking uh, plastic bottles uh, filled with water that you drink out of. Uh, the toaster I showed you. Um, the fucking Xbox that I've got, the, the fucking TV I've got, even though it's a Toshiba and I've had it for 10, 15 fucking years. I've had it a long time. Damn good TV. Made in China. That's, that's why this is such a big deal. All the production and manufacturing is in fucking China. Yeah, I mean, America outsourced everything to China. Literally every fucking thing. Even Indian tech uh, scam call centers <laughs> outsourced to fucking China. Okay? Everything got outsourced. America is just sitting on its ass, being a parasite, fucking mooching off of everyone else on the planet. That's how everyone else on the planet sees it. They fucking hate you, America. You're stupid fucking pieces of shit. You need to grow the fuck up and realize you need to do some fucking serious self-improvement. I've already done mine, so fuck off. Anyway, continuing on. It's currently beginning to shut down 
the economies in Europe. And it's going to be worse here because we bungled it. We could have started the measures that they're starting right now two months ago. They're just like recognizing it. They should have, I, I mean, <clears throat> I don't want to go there. Um, so this was the chart that I was showing of how the Fed is being reactionary. So uh, over to my website, this was the video that uh, we just did that, that, uh, where I was predicting something. And then before we got the video uploaded, it actually happened. Um, I want you to see that uh, the White House had a, a live coronavirus task force delivers another update and then Fed cuts rates to zero. Uh, New York governor uh, wants Trump to mobilize the military over uh, what? The coronavirus. Uh, and then whoa, whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> You, you want to mobilize the fucking military? Are Americans that fucking retarded and ignorant and stupid and naive and mongoloidal that you need to mobilize the military to get a fucking grip on everyone's stupidity and bitch slap them into being awake about what's really going on? Is that what actually is about to happen? <laughs> what the fuck? You're just moving right along. You know, something really important. All of this was predicted in my book. And so I was writing this in 2005, 6, and 7. And then if you watch the Hidden Secrets of Money series, just uh, watch the whole thing again. I was just watching some of 2 and 3. And these things back, uh, you know, 7, 6, 6 years ago, 6 years ago, 6 years ago, 4 years ago four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, they're predicting all of this. The Bitcoin one, not quite as much, uh, but it's very important. Actually, it's time to just rewatch all of these because you'll see it all laid out and you'll understand more of how to protect yourself through this thing. This is getting pretty darn scary. And I expect just utter chaos uh, breaking out. And oh, yeah, yeah. I got a comment on this one. I have to. Mike Maloney, a guy who has put his life effort into understanding economy and economics, is saying that he, he is aghast, he is taken back, he is blown away, and I'm paraphrasing in synonymous word use, that he expects this to turn into chaos. That's, that's exactly what he said. He's expecting it to turn into chaos. That he's... He's like, what? The fuck? Even he can see how fucked the situation is. Okay? Put that into context, everybody. Somebody who has spent their life in an effort to understand the fake economic, economic bullshit system understands how fucking much of a delicate snowflake it is compared to something in the real fucking world. And that's the takeaway here. The current system of government and financial bullshit stupidity needs to go the fuck away. It's an archaic bullshit greed-driven system that is billions of fucking years old going back all the way to the fucking cavemen trading shit with each other. And then they discovered a shiny fucking rock, which you now call gold. That's how retarded your system is, Americans. Mike, you, you've spent your life, I mean, you would say you've spent your life understanding this bullshit. But when you break it down to its roots, when, when you break down all the... Uh, layers of Confusopoly bullshit on top of it to its core mechanics. It's a greed and fear system and right now it's in a state of fear. And the fear shows you how bad the greed really is. It's a bullshit fuck you system where people in power just because they look pretty say I'm better than you and this is how it's proven with money. Mike, I'm not saying you wasted your fucking life 
look at it this way, Mike. It's not a waste of your life because now you have all of that experience and you can tell people if if this uh, situation with the coronavirus changes things, if it changes things, you can look at people later on before you die and you should make it your life's goal if it changes shit to educate everybody on how bad and how much of a confusopoly this fear and greed system really was. Well, right now it still is, but, you know, a guy can think about and theorize about what could possibly happen, about things getting better. Doesn't make it the truth. Doesn't make it an axiom. An axiom is not truth. Truth is irrefutable. There's very few truths going around in the current system. Everything's a fucking axiom. Everything is a fact. And what I learned in the judicial system is that fact is just fiction in progress. It's an axiom that's waiting to be a lie. That's all it is. Mike, I get the feeling that, uh, you know, nine minutes, 20 seconds into your video, I've taken uh, what you've done and I've over explained it and turned it into a fucking hour long video and added some uh, snide, sarcastic, satirical co commentary closer to the end of it. I get the feeling that the um, last uh, few minutes of your video is just you recapping a few things. But you know what? Why the fuck not? That breakdown of the global financial system. This time, you know... We came within a couple of days of the interbank lending freezing up where banks don't trust each other and they won't lend to each other. And if that happens, the next day credit cards will stop working. And if that happens, then the gas stops coming out of the pump. And a couple days later, there's no more groceries in the grocery store. Um, uh, we came within a couple days of that in 1998. With what he just said about the banks not trusting each other, that's the greed and fear system. Just, just to let you know that that is exactly what it is. Moving right the fuck along. Long-term capital management. We came within about 24 hours of it when Lehman Brothers melted down and when Ben Bernanke launched all of this QE and everything. Um, uh, and uh, now we're basically there. So I'm expecting that there will be some sort of uh, bank holiday and bail-ins and bailouts. Get ready for the biggest bailouts in history. When you close down on all of the rest... Oh, yeah, yeah. Bailouts. Trump put into effect a thing that because the, the billionaires who have stock, more stock than I do, a fuck ton more, like massive amounts of percentages, because they lost theoretical money on paperwork that doesn't fucking exist to begin with, let alone exist in the digital climate of, theoretically, you have this many theoretical shit dollars. Because they lost theoretical versions of theoretical money, he's throwing them a bailout. He's throwing billions of dollars on them. I'm sitting here on disability and food stamps, unable to get a fucking job. That money would benefit me if they would bail me out of this bullshit situation I'm in. Or, you know, my fucking stepdad. He works at a fucking uh, electric company. One of the local electric companies. He needs a fucking bailout. Or my mom needs a fucking bailout. And they've got jobs. But people like me need the fucking bailout. We're stuck here at the bottom of the fucking rung being shit on by everyone. We need that shit to go the fuck away, and we need to be bailed out of this bullshit situation we're in. Where we're being fucked over by everyone. Moving right the fuck along. Fronts for a month, and you close down uh, the cruise lines and the airlines, and, I mean, we're going to be creating trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars shortly. If this isn't going to take that long. And then there's going to be the helicopter drops that I talk about. Watch episode seven. 
Then, make sure you do this. Click on videos. Go over to sort by most popular. And, you know, here's all of those videos again. But watch this one, decoding the elite plan for the world economy, because that is what all of my predictions were based on. And it's a 2002 paper by Ben Bernanke. It was a speech by Ben Bernanke. And I saw what was coming. I wrote my book around it. I Hold on. First of all, there's a train in the background going by. I need to let that go the fuck by. Hmm. Well, hurry the fuck up. And while that's going by, I'm gonna put the toaster back. Toot the horn again. Toot toot. Fuck off. Make like a train and leave your tracks. Or make tracks. Be gone. Okay. Close enough. Secondly, what he's talking about, uh, this book written by another guy. Okay. Let me explain a few things as supporting evidence for a thesis statement I'm going to make. Supporting evidence. Your conscious brain, your gray matter, and your subconscious brain, your white matter, they process at different speeds. Consciously, it's a lot slower. <laughs> I forgot the actual speeds, but the subconscious processes anywhere between 8,000 to 80,000 it's it's somewhere in between those two or either end but it processes that much faster 8,000 to 80,000 times faster than your conscious gray matter which is most of when you're awake you know your white matter your subconscious takes over usually when you're asleep which is why sometimes you'll have a dream and uh, then events will unfold just like that dream. It's because your your brain is uh, a biological computer. Nerve cells interacting with each other like circuits on a printed board. That's that's the synonymous parallelism that works. It, that's accepted as an axiom among a lot of scientists, mainstream and non-mainstream I don't know how to actually classify it because mainstream is such shit sometimes mainstream is just full of shit it really is that point aside these people who are in positions to make predictions to tell you something's going to happen before it happens and then it happens extremely close to the way they said it was going to happen that is because they understand psychology the study of human behavior they understand mathematics including Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Hei uh, not Heisenberg but fucking chaos theory Chaos theory, let me simplify it for you. It is patterns interacting with patterns, interwoven and interlaced with patterns. That's all it is. Patterns on patterns on patterns that are interacting with those patterns inside of a giant pattern. It doesn't go on infinitely. It's just a really big pattern of patterns of patterns. Okay? That's, that's what it is. That's chaos theory in a nutshell. 
and they understand all this at the mathematic level and at the social interaction level and at the economic and economic level which is just you know another form of mathematics they understand all this consciously and subconsciously and because they have a firm grasp of it consciously their subconscious processes this information that they get every day that they see on the news that they talk to their friends across the world that they go out into their community and look at how people behave and they understand one of the big things that people are nothing if not predictable behavioral patterns psychological analysis that's the study of their either human behavior how people interact with other people and you're all fucking stupid to me Put that out there right now. You're all a bunch of fucking idiots in my eyes. You really are. You're extremely small and simple patterns, and you can't see beyond yourselves. You can't comprehend beyond yourselves. You're too stupid to fucking exist within a society that needs to grow beyond where it is right now. That's what I'm saying. These people, they understand all these things. They go into behavioral an an analytics and analysis. They understand the math and the psychology. They understand it all at a, a decent level. Some of them very intimately understand it. And that's why all of the mathematicians and everyone working with Matt Groening on The Simpsons and Futurama, they all have applied physics and theoretical physics and applied mathematics doctorates degrees that's why the simpsons predicted stuff before it happened because they predicted it based on the model of human behavior and the progression of events within those boundaries of human behavior that they understood and they understood all these things at a mathematic level These people that he's talking about, this dude who wrote this book, he most likely understands that from a lifetime of analyzing the market and the economy. Because it's all based on psychology and human behavior. It's just numbers that are simplifying <laughs> a wide area of things. That's what it's doing. And for it to be predicting stuff, with um, any a degree of accuracy it means that these people know what they're talking about to the point where they can predict what's going to happen before it happens now understand this you fucking idiots you don't know jack shit about what I'm talking about just because I'm explaining it to you doesn't mean you fucking understand you idiot from your perspective it's this but from my and their perspective it's a cone going out. Human behavior is a very linear cone going out. It'll expand to a certain degree. And within this expansion are the variables of the possibilities and variations of those events. And for them to be able to look ahead in the pattern and say, this event right here, this is going to happen. Even... Even if that event is only slightly askew by a couple of centimeters on the, on the scale, it's still really fucking close within the prediction parameters and the margin of error. That's how it really works. Everything has a margin of error. Everything has give and take that it can work within inside those set parameters. It's not a cut and dry binary thing, you fucking idiots. It doesn't work that cut and dry in that binary. But your current legislative, legal, judicial, and economic systems do. And that's why they're inherently flawed. They have no leeway. They have no give, no take, no ebb and flow that allows for human error and the margin of error. And right now, in the market, 
the margin for error is this big. And the system works on this binary, this, this thick of a binary, within this much margin of an error. And it's working on this. It's so rigid, it's this small. And right now, everything's in this big fucking margin of error swaying around wildly because of the current situation. And your current system is too small to compensate for it. That's why I say, that's just one of the many reasons why I say, you're all a bunch of fucking mongoloidal retards. And you don't deserve your existence. Hi, right, moving right the fuck along. I wrapped my entire life around it, betting that this stuff would actually come true. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but it is playing out as written. So thank you very much for listening. Do your best to protect yourselves as I have. Uh, and, you know, we all just have to hope for the best. You know, it's scary times. It's not bad to be scared. Well, that's that's nearly the end of his. So I've, um, hang on. One hour, 25 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. Yeah, okay. I've wasted a lot of time over explaining and over simplifying and then at the end being really pissed off because I understand a lot of this stuff at multiple levels and everyone else is a fucking idiot in my eyes. Even you, Mike, you're an idiot. To me, you're a fucking idiot because you're not making the effort to explain a better system that encompasses the entire margin of error, both mathematically and practically. You know what? You're not paying me, or you're not, um, none of you are fucking supporting me to do that. I've been getting shit my whole life. And you want me to help you and explain a system that'll work and compensate for more of a margin of error? And no, I'm not going to be able to compensate for 100% of the margin of error. Even with my extensive knowledge... I cannot compensate for it. I can, however, suggest a system that will be able to eventually compensate and it may adapt a lot quicker than the current rigid bullshit system that's binary. But I can't make a system that compensates for 100% of the margin of error. And... This, this little truth about how that system works, it's going to scare the living fuck out of all of you. To start with, you're going to have to be broken down to basics. You're going to have to understand the bare bones minimum basics. You're going to have to throw away your bullshit fucking economy, your bullshit system of rules, and you're going to have to live... Like your ancestors in caves lived a long ass fucking time ago. So that you understand the basics. Everything has to be broken down to basics. And yes, I mean it that severely, that massively. Everything has to go to basics. You need to learn how to take care of your fucking selves. How to catch, break down, uh, field strip, preserve, cook and live your own fucking lives. You know, that first bit before live. Yeah, you know, that all applies to food. You're going to have to learn how to make your own shit. Get by on your own fucking strength and ability. None of this fucking bullshit reliance on someone else to do shit for you. Like the government has made everyone dependent on it to just uh, help them exist. Yeah, everything has to be broke down to basics. No fucking joke. Everyone needs to learn how to fucking live for themselves. You need the basics before you have the privileges that you haven't fucking earned. That's how it has to work. And it's going to scare the living fuck out of you being broke down to basics. Building your own fucking home. Living your own fucking life, hunting your own fucking food, foraging your own fucking vegetables, learning how to farm your own fucking food, learning how to make your own bread from from the fucking grain itself. Yeah, it, it's going to be a fucking 
clusterfuck shit show shock and awe campaign for all of you. But that's what has to happen. You have to appreciate the bare bones minimum basics. You have to know how to fucking survive so that you understand this bullshit economy system is a fucking joke. It's laughable at its best. It's a fucking joke. That's it. I'm done with this video. Fuck off till next time. And give me your fucking money. I deserve it more than you do.